Hey S'mores, I'm Shannon Morris. Welcome to Morse Code. I do tech reviews and tutorials, so if you are looking for in-depth tech and gadget content, you've come to the right place. I picked up a Samsung Galaxy S21 Ultra a couple of weeks ago. I gave it plenty of time to test the battery, the cameras, all that good stuff. I've been using it as my daily driver, and now, now, I am finally able to bring you my full in-depth review. I'm so excited. Now, to note, there is also an unboxing video along with some hands-on looks at the Galaxy Buds Pro and some accessories. I also did a full deep dive about the camera lenses on my channel as a separate video, but today is all about the full review. Now, before I get started, I did want to thank this episode's sponsor, the Innovation Program. They have graduates who have worked with the program to develop their concepts into real-world technologies, so I will be featuring several innovators throughout this month. Today I wanted to share with you Michinobu Uda, who created a handheld instrument which he called the Udar. This device has a winding touch mechanism that makes full use of all your fingers on both hands. The keys are all pressure sensitive and they can increase or decrease in volume depending on how hard the artist presses on them. The player can play notes smoothly in a legato fashion, which means the notes flow from one to another without sudden staccato breaks in between them. Yes, I used to be in a choral choir, can you tell? If the octave or the pitch needs to be changed, you can adjust it by turning the handles. If this sounds like a calliope or the old-timey circus instrument, that's because the sounds of the udar are based off of those instruments. Michinobu Uda is now creating a new model, and this upgrade will be featured soon on the Innovators channel, so keep an eye out for that video. I absolutely love this. The sound is just so happy, and it's so cheap. I love listening to it. I could listen to Michinobu Uda playing the Udar for hours on end, so create a playlist because I personally love it. This is just one of the many innovators that is exploring the world of the future, and you can see profiles and more innovations over at their site, which is innovators.com slash en, and that is spelled I-N-N-O-U-V-A-T-O-R-S dot com slash en for English. Thank you so much to the Innovation Program for their support of my channel. So let's talk about the S21 Ultra. It is now shipping in phantom black or silver. This is the silver color. And Samsung also has some exclusive colorways, including titanium, navy, and brown. It costs an MSRP of $1199.99 for 128 gigs, $1249.99 for 256 gigs, or $1379.99 for 512. Included in the box, you get the phone, a data cable, the SIM eject tool, and a quick start guide. There is no power adapter included though. So the phone is made out of Corning Gorilla Glass Victus on the front and the back as well. And the frame, the rails along the edges, are aluminum. It's a decent size. It's very, very similar to my iPhone 12 Pro Max. It's at 165.1 by 75.6 by 8.9 millimeters and 227 grams. The layout along the edges is very similar to the other S21s. The volume and Bixby side buttons are on the side. And note, you can change the Bixby button to just power your phone on or off instead of just activating Bixby. So I did that. USB-C and a single SIM slot is on the bottom. There's also stereo speakers by AKG embedded at the bottom and hidden at the top of the display, and the phone is also IP68. The display itself is gorgeous. It's a 6.8 inch screen with curved edges. It's a Quad HD Plus Dynamic AMOLED 2X Infinity O display type. The resolution is defaulted to Full HD Plus, but you can increase it to Quad HD Plus, which is 3200 by 1440 at 515 pixels per inch. Now this still gives you the full 120 hertz refresh rate, but you may experience a slight drop in the battery. Now the aspect ratio is 20 by 9, that's very common to this day, and the screen size to body ratio is about 89.33%. When I took this out over the weekend to downtown Parker, which is a super cute downtown, like small town, it's adorable, I love going there, it was super, super bright, 1500 nits, so I didn't even need to think about the brightness. It wasn't even something that I really had to think about when I was out in the sun light, and that's what I appreciate. The adaptive brightness did a very great job of increasing as needed, and at night, my eyes didn't feel tired, thanks to the eye comfort technology. You can also add always-on display, you can customize it with whatever details you want to show up on the screen while the screen is off. So you have weather, a clock, your calendar schedule, your notifications, etc, etc. On to 
the cameras as well. So the S21 Ultra has a quad rear camera setup. So that means they have four cameras on the back. These are the specs for them. You have the top one, which is an ultra wide, 120 degrees. That one has a 0.6 zoom fixed focus. Next, you have the main one, which is 108 megapixels. That's quite a bit. That one is stabilized with OIS and it also has laser autofocus. Under that, you've got a telephoto lens at 3x zoom. And then on the side, there's a smaller sensor, which is also a telephoto at 10 times zoom. Now that one also has optical image stabilization and it's a folded or a periscope lens. Since the phone also has laser focus, you get a very, very fast focus as well built into the design. On the front, there's a selfie camera. It's 40 megapixels. It does a fine job. And then for video recording, it's just like on the regular S21. You can record at several different resolutions and different frame rates. There's FHD at 30 and 60, UHD at 30 and 60, and also 8K at 24. However, if you do want to record at 8K 24, I would recommend increasing the storage that you choose to purchase because there is no expandable storage in this phone. Super Steady is also available, but that can only be enabled for full HD at 30 or 60. And I did want to mention as well, regular videos can do a digital zoom up to 12 times. You do get some of the normal features, like there's hyperlapse, which is basically a time lapse. There's slow-mo, along with a bunch of extra features in the camera app. That includes single take, which we've seen before from Samsung. There's director's view, that one's new. Panoramas, food and night modes. There's also pro modes for video and photo. And the scene optimizer is still included as is face retouching filters, but those can be turned off completely in the settings underneath the filter settings. So if you don't want them on, you can turn them off completely. Now I did do a detailed comparison and review. So make sure to look at my deep dive camera video in case you wanna see that. So generally my videos were slightly saturated, but they weren't overexposed. This is very similar to the S21. The audio from the mics was generally good as well, but it did pick up a lot of background noise, especially if it was windy. There was a lot of that happening. So you may want to use an external mic. Hi. <laughs> This is a test with Super Steady on. Welcome to downtown Parker. And here is a UHD 60 FPS video of the front facing camera on both of these at the same time. Let's see how it looks. Hey baby, I'm recording a video in full HD on both of these phones at the same time to see how the audio and the video looks. Woohoo! This director's view, which has a back camera, but it's also recording the front camera at the same time. And I can switch between the lenses of the back camera while it's still recording the front one as well. That is so cool. <laughs> Check that out. The photos were generally quite impressive. I really liked the detail and the color balance using these four different lenses. The front facing camera was also really impressive. It gave me excellent, excellent exposure. Even when the sun was setting behind me and kind of creating a halo, it didn't end up making my face super dark. So it was very, very good at balancing all those different lighting levels. The portraits are some of the best that I have seen so far. This has gotten so much better than last year's models. I was quite impressed especially since it was able to take care of like the edges of my hair and not make those super blurry, which always would look really weird. Then we have zoom. Um, still potatoes at 100 times zoom, but the clarity is pretty amazing all the way up to 30 times zoom. I mean, even at 100 times, it's still pretty impressive, but it looks like a potato. I mean, the only time you would use it really is to zoom in and like try to read something maybe, but it doesn't give you like beautiful clear shots that you would get on a traditional zoom lens, which is like very, very large. So it's it's a trade-off. But they did include a new feature called Zoom Lock. It definitely helps with this as it helps you keep your hand steady, but it doesn't do a good job locking onto subjects if the subject is not clearly specified. So if the colors kind of melt together or they're similar or there's no like super hard lines, it's gonna jump around a bit because it won't really know what you want to focus on and it's gonna try to find that subject. 
Then we had night mode, actually pretty good. Uh, the Ultra did a better job than the S21 of cutting down on the overexposed signage. So the brightness was a little bit more level with the rest of the photo. The tree was very clear and the traffic lights did not blow out on my photography. It definitely wasn't bad, but I do want to use this some more to really, really focus on it. And speaking of focus, no issues. It is faster at focusing than the previous generation. It did better at focusing on the correct subject. The speed of capture is also increased, which may be thanks to the faster processor from Qualcomm, which is a Snapdragon 888. Now the camera gets a lot of its tech from the AI engine and the more powerful component. So for example, you get 12 gigs of RAM with 128 or 256 gigs of storage space. You can also opt for 16 gigs of RAM, which comes in the 512 gig storage space model. But there is no SD card support, no expandable storage, so you're kind of stuck with whatever storage you choose to go with. My 3D Mark scores were comparable to those on the S21. I hit 5606 on the new Wild life test on 3D Mark, as well as 5567 on the new stress test. This score kind of matches up with what I would expect because when I tested some of my games, it also did very well with load times and it had no lag, no long loading times that I had to deal with. When it comes to general experience with this phone, it was already really easy to get acclimated to it since the system is set up basically the same as the previous generations. So I was able to find everything I needed with no issues, which I appreciate since I tend to customize customize Samsung's One UI. This year you have One UI 3, which does bring some of the perks of Android 11 over, which it's built on top of, so you would expect that, along with its own interface additions. Additionally, and this is exciting, although I haven't gotten a chance to test it yet, S Pen support is included on the S21 Ultra. Now I did order an S Pen, it's on order, so I cannot currently test this feature until it all arrives, but I'm hoping that I can test it in the near future. There is still some bloatware from Samsung, many of which you cannot uninstall. But I do have a pro tip. Whenever you use these apps, do not, I repeat, do not check any boxes, check boxes that might pop up without reading them first, since oftentimes these are completely optional. You don't actually have to check the box. Like, I agree to accept personalized ads. You don't have to click that box. Just skip it. So, that way you don't get a bunch of annoying personalized ads. You might still get ads on your phone because it's Samsung, but at least they won't be annoying and personalized. You may be wondering why that's annoying. It's because they're tracking that data. So I don't, I don't check that box. And I did want to mention that accessibility features are included as well, like Android's new live transcribe and captions. There's display options. There's also hearing aid support. I am always curious about security on these new devices. And this one does feature Samsung Knox for hardware and software security. So that's going to help protect your kernel from packs. And it also has Knox Vault for your data storage. And there's also DEFEX or Defeat Exploit, which is kind of used for DT rooting. However, apparently you can still do that. Now face unlock does work, but it's not as accurate as the iPhone's face ID. I had many times where it aired out and said it couldn't recognize my face. The fingerprint sensor on the other hand has gotten a lot better. They include Qualcomm's new ultrasonic fingerprint sensor. I believe it's Gen 2, which is not only a lot faster and isn't as bright, for example, when using this at night, but it does capture more data to increase that accuracy, it's also a bigger area, like a surface area between that display, which also means it brings upgraded security as well. Now models do vary depending on your location and your carrier, but both sub six and millimeter wave versions are available. There's also Bluetooth 5.2, a slight upgrade from 5.0, up to Wi-Fi 6E, which is an increase from Wi-Fi 6. It's a little bit better. There's also NFC and a SIM slot. Mine supports single SIM. This is the unlocked version that I got in the US. However, dual and eSIM versions are available on certain carriers and locations according to the Samsung website. Ultra wideband is also included. So UWB can give you better accuracy for location. So if you're using smart tags, for example, those will be more accurate. I did feel like call quality on this phone was fine. Nothing to report there. And I was able to use the 5G speeds on Google Fi here in Denver, no problem. 
problem. However, again, 5G speeds, just like with carrier and location, those are going to vary as well, depending on where you live and what 5G you are using. Stereo speakers, those ones by AKG, they support Dolby Atmos as well. However, there's no headphone jack. Speakers are on the top of the display and on the bottom rail. So when you are playing music, I did feel like it was well balanced, even though the top one is kind of hidden. Excellent clarity, so really good for podcasts. The bass kind of lacked, like I was listening to Janelle Monet, Daft Punk, and it was kind of eh. It sounded like every other smartphone on the market, really, except for like some of the heavy hitters. They sound exactly like the S21 regular as well, so if speakers are a big thing for you, you could go with either phone. The battery is a 5,000 milliamp per hour battery. It supports fast wireless charging 2.0. That will get you about 15 watts and also fast charging via wired, which will give you 25 watts max. Of course, that depends on using the specific accessories that also support those. Wireless power share, which is where you stick something on the back of this and the phone charges your thing. It works great for charging up the Galaxy Buds. So very happy with that. Also, the phone went from 100% charge down to about 60% in seven hours. And with that full time being used to watch YouTube videos or at least have them playing on my phone. I wasn't watching YouTube videos for seven hours because um, that would be a lot of time spent watching YouTube videos, but all the radios except for Wi-Fi were turned off. I also had this on full resolution, adaptive refresh rate and adaptive brightness. So given my iffy thoughts about Samsungs in the past, I think this might surprise some folks out there, but I'm pretty sure this is gonna be my new daily driver for a while. It really does define the word ultra in many ways. I would still have preferred some better color options for a vibrant lifestyle because obviously, I live that very vibrant lifestyle, as you can see with my hair, but that's a very small trade-off for excellent specs. I have never been incredibly impressed with the Samsung cameras, but they have made some really worthy upgrades this year to the point where I think it's a very big contender and I can't wait to see what kind of smartphone cameras we get on the market this year as well to contend with this one. I think that this is one of the best phones on the market right now. Samsung has commonly had some of the best hardware, but I often go back to vanilla Android, sacrificing that better hardware because I don't want all the bloatware. And there is still some annoying bloatware with the software on the S21 Ultra, even though you're spending like $1,200. So it's probably obvious, but I do love it. <laughs> especially since my trade-in helped me get it for much less than $1,200. And that was my plan. I know that Samsung does this trade-in program and I know that I have to upgrade these phones. And if I have to purchase them, I'm going to take advantage of that trade-in program so that I can continue to bring you these reviews. So for me, it was very, very much worth it. Should you buy it? Yes, if it's in your budget. If you have no need for the extra perks like the higher resolution, the extra zoom, the bigger battery, then much of the experience will be very, very similar on the S21 and the S21 Plus. But I would love to know if you feel the same. Comment below, let me know. Thanks again so much to my s'mores for subscribing and for watching. I'm Shannon Morse and I will see you soon. Bye y'all.